moving forward this is very important factor for analyzing the knee pain for the patient patella any shifting in the patella can cause knee pain for the patient and that is why we need to understand that which all direction patella shifting can be done so for that first i will just tell you the ideal position of the patella so whenever we observe the patella it has to be in the exact center position from the lateral to medial condyles this is how the patella will be actually positioned in the neutral position of the knee joint if it is gliding towards the lateral direction more then again it can cause knee pain for the patient why because of the more forces are generated towards the lateral direction now this can occur because of the weak medialis muscles or if there is tightness in the lateralis muscles so we need to identify that and we need to correct it if lateral gliding of the patella is happening next condition can be lateral tilting of patella now this kind of condition you can see if you are observing your patient patient is sitting in high sitting position if it is present in both the knee joint it gives appearance of grasshopper's eyes it is also known as grasshopper's patella if it is present bilaterally because there is a lateral tilting of the patella from the superior direction and this condition also occurs because of the lateral side of the muscle tightness or medial side of the muscles weakness so this also needs to be corrected in search of reducing the knee pain the next condition is lateral rotation of the patella also known as squinting of patella in this condition patella rotates in medial direction from the upper side and lateral direction from the inferior side and this condition also can cause faulty mechanics in the knee joint and because of which knee pain can occur so we need to identify this and correct it in search of reducing the knee pain apart from this there are two other conditions that we normally see if you are observing the patella on the lateral direction from the lateral direction if we see there can be patella baja if patella is shifting in downward direction more and there can be patella alta if patella is shifting towards the upward direction more and this is the normal position where the patella exactly has to be now in this patella baja mainly it occurs because of the weakness of the quadricep muscle here which causes because of which quadricep tendon is unable to maintain the patella position in the superior direction and that is why patella glides in the inferior side and this condition can occur because of the if there is any injury to this patella tendon over here because of which this is shifting upward or there is a cyst formation over here which is causing the upward shifting of the patella now this cyst can be formed because of any injuries near the articulating surface ligaments or the meniscus that we are going to find out in the next stage but we need to remember that these are the abnormalities can be present in the patella which is patella baja if the patella is shifting downwards and patella alta if patella is shifting in the upward direction so after analyzing the patella next thing what we are going to analyze is articular surface and most common thing in the articular surface occurs is degeneration most commonly it again occurs because of the age factors so that we need to look for that we can analyze from the x ray of the patient then chondromalacia patella which is again a very common condition which is degeneration of the articular surface from the patellar side inferior border of the patella if it is sliding towards the femoral condyle that time the articular surface is damaged more then it can cause the articular surface damage and it can also cause pain to the knee joint so how to identify this particular pain for that we have to perform zoller sign so in zoller sign patient will be in supine lying position with neutral position of the knee joint therapist holds the patella in particular one position and then we ask patient to perform active contraction of the quadricep muscle while performing this if patient complains of pain increasing of the symptoms that means the test is positive which suggests that patient is having chondromalacia patella again chondromalacia patella is not age related condition so that we have to look for it in each and every age population if patient comes to us next condition is oscur scleter disease this is also very common condition seen in the children young children population who are more into sports athletic activities also known as osteitis why osteitis because it is the inflammation of the growing part of the bone and this occurs mainly in the persons who have more of the jumping activities and because of which the attachment of the 
tibial plateau of the patella tendon it gets continuously stretched more and more so there will be extra bump formation just above the tibial plateau because of the repeated contractions of the patellar tendon and because of that inflammation patient will be having pain and other symptoms so that is how we can come to know about the osgood scleter disease once this articulating surfaces damages have been checked then we next we can look for the bursa damage bursa also there are two common conditions that we find out which is pre patellar bursitis and fat pad syndrome pre patellar bursitis is nothing but a bursitis bursa inflammation just below the patella now this condition we can check with the help of bouncing patella test or tap test of the patella in that again patient will be in supine lying position you check and you palpate the patella of the patient and you just apply a tap if a patella is bouncing or wobbling over the swelling present in the knee joint that means the test is positive and we come to a conclusion that patellar bursitis is there pre patellar bursitis and in fat pad syndrome as you can see here on the anterior side of the knee joint if just below the patella we have extra formation of the fat pad it causes upward movement of the patella and because of which there is we can see that double bumpy appearance or it is also known as camel bump appearance of the knee joint that you if you are observing that means it is the presence of fat pad syndrome for the patient 